The decisions which directors make in the coming months are going to have a huge impact on both the future of their businesses and potentially their personal positions. Two major areas for directors to consider are remuneration and personal liability. The recent news on the suspension of wrongful trading is sending the wrong message with regard to the suggestion that personal liability is now off the table. That's not the case, and it would be easy to explain why in the context of director pay. Directors tend to receive money from a company in one of three ways. Salary through payroll, dividends, or director's loans which are either being repaid or accrued. It's not uncommon to see a combination of these methods in a director's annual drawings, but if the company subsequently enters an insolvency process, these alternative ways of drawing money are treated very differently. I'd strongly recommend that in these uncertain times, directors ensure they draw their funds by taking salary. As long as directors are acting reasonably and continuing to trade, then they're absolutely entitled to be paid a market salary for their role. The use of dividends in uncertain times is much more risky and there are various pitfalls. Firstly, the company must have sufficient distributable profits to make a dividend. Some companies draw dividends in anticipation of future profits, but if it subsequently turns out there wasn't sufficient profit available to declare dividends, then the payments can be clawed back in an insolvency process by an administrator or liquidator. Also, if the declaration of the dividend leaves the company cash flow insolvent, or dividends continue to be paid whilst the company is insolvent, then those payments may be clawed back as well. Finally, it's really important to ensure that where dividends are declared, they're done properly. Directors should be taking advice from their accountants and solicitors to ensure the paperwork's in order. My advice would be that where there's any doubt whatsoever about insolvency or the future viability of the business, directors shouldn't rely on directors' loans for their income. In a subsequent insolvency, if the company was insolvent at the time, or insolvent as a result of those payments being made, then any repayment of a director's loan is very likely to be challenged. The modes of challenge can differ, but here are a couple of examples of how directors may be personally liable. Firstly, preferences. Payments which may be challenged in an insolvency when they're made by the company at a time when the company was insolvent, and there was a desire to prefer the party who received the payment. It would be very difficult to argue that the repayment of directors' loans was not a preferential payment where other creditors are left out of pocket. Secondly, misfeasance. This is a catch-all clause in an insolvency process and enables a director to be pursued personally for breaching their fiduciary duty to the company and causing loss. It's used regularly where directors have made decisions which weren't in the best interest of the company or of the creditors at a time when the company was insolvent. If you'd like a more detailed guide to preferences or misfeasance, then I've done a couple of other videos on those. But the key message from this video is, where a director has any doubts about the solvency of their business, then the safest way to draw money is by way of salary. Thanks.